speak later. His disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. It's amazing. Jesus gives Thomas exactly what he wants. Exactly what he asked for. Thomas says, I want a personal connection. And Jesus says, I'll do it. Listen, I know that um, you may have those moments in your life where the doubts come to the surface. The questions bubble up. And I I don't want to tell you to ignore those things. I don't want to tell you the doubts are bad because they're not. There's no place in the Bible where a doubt is ever categorized as being sinful. So you don't have to ignore those doubts. What, What you need to do, though, is you need to get to the personal. Spend some personal time with Jesus. Just a couple suggestions of how to do that. The words of this book can help you encounter Jesus. I'll show you in just a minute what I mean by that. Or maybe you can meet with a friend or or come to church on a regular basis and say, I just need to soak in the presence of what God is doing. Get into a life group. Build some relationships with with some other people. Because unless it becomes personal to you, the doubts will overtake your knowledge. It's got to be personal. But maybe you know someone. And that other person has all these doubts. And you've been trying to answer all their questions time and time and time and time again. And there's a time for answering questions, but there's a time for doing what Philip did and just say, well, come and see. Just come and see. Spend a few minutes thinking and experiencing who Jesus really is directly from him and see what he does in your life. Look at the end of this passage we're at. Jesus said to Thomas, Verse 29, because you've seen me, you believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed. Jesus is talking about you. This is where this whole passage gets personal to you. If you believe in him and you've never seen him, you're part of this blessed category. Jesus says there's something about humanity that you have to have a blessing of God on your life for you to be able to cross that line into faith commitment. And that blessing of God, he says, I want you to know me. I want you to have a personal relationship with me. I want you to meet me. So look at this. There's even more that comes here. Verse 30, Jesus did many other miracles, miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. These words of this book are not designed to give you answers. These words of this book are not designed primarily to give you knowledge. These words of this book are designed to give you belief, to give you faith, to give you a personal connection to God that overshadows your doubts. Doesn't remove them entirely all the time, but it shrinks them in comparison to the awesome reality of knowing that there's a God in heaven who loves you enough to send his son to die on the cross so that your sins could be forgiven. To rise again so that you could be promised life. And to enter heaven to prepare a place there for us so that we could join him one day. That's the message of a personal God who wants a personal connection to you. And these words are the words to take you there. So here's the last thing I want you to jot down. If belief is challenging to you, you don't need more answers as much as you need a personal encounter. You don't need more answers as much as you need a personal encounter with God. And you have to take the opportunity to find that personal encounter. When I was in Chicago, there was a guy that I met named Jason. And uh, I was the pastor of a church there. And one of these days, he he just like showed up. I think the first time I ever heard from him, I got a phone call, and it was one of these things that was just like, can I meet with you? I think I need to talk with you about something. 
And so I said, okay, let's go ahead and get together. And we went over to Arby's, and we sat in Arby's, and he told me his story. And this dude tells me the story about how he had this relationship with this girl, and he was deeply in love with her. And it was an amazing thing for him. He, he really thought that this was going to be the forever thing, the one for him. And then she did some really nasty things, just really ripped his heart to shreds and dumped him. And so then he's facing this tragedy of encountering what is his life all about because he thought this was going to end up in, in a long-lasting, forever kind of marriage, and then she just ripped him to shreds. So what's this all about? He met another friend, and that other friend got involved at a church and was teaching Sunday school, and she said to Jason, listen, buddy, why don't you come with me? Just, just come with me. Because actually the lady who had just been teaching Sunday school had been a believer for about a month, and somehow this church had put her in the position of teaching a Sunday school class, and she didn't know what she was doing, so she talked to Jason, who also didn't know what he was doing, but the two of them not knowing what they were doing was at least better than only one of them. And so they got together and they, they met and they studied the Bible during the week so that she could have a lesson to teach these kids on Sunday morning and then he would go with her on Sundays and help them out. And, and I don't know how all that situation worked, but he tells me the story that there was this one day when he was reading in Luke on his own, Luke chapter 6, by himself in his house, and he read this passage where it says, if you forgive others, God will forgive you. And all of a sudden, he realized all the bitterness that he'd been holding against this girl who had dumped him. And he got down on his knees, and he held out his hands, and he said, God, I know if I'm ever going to forgive her, I need to get your forgiveness. So would you forgive me? And I release all of my bitterness too. And he tells me the story, and I'm, I mean, this guy's never been to church before, Never. And he's sitting across the table from me, and I'm in stunned, shocked awe that this guy has had a salvation conversion experience on the basis of nothing but the Bible itself, because God met him. Friends, you don't need any kind of magical words, you don't need any kind of magical thing to do to try to force God to save you. You need a relationship with him. It's personal. And so I challenge you, I encourage you to dig into the word of God with other people who love him and let this thing be a personal thing. I want to ask you right now that you would just take a moment in reflection. That little card that's in your bulletin has a blank spot on the back that I just want to ask that you would do a little reflection on. Jot down a couple thoughts.